Okay, so when you do GCSE Hire, you learn that there is something called the sign rule, which is used for this kind of setup where you have lots of opposite sides and opposite angles in a triangle, and it's A over sine A is B over sine B. And you also learn that there's a cosine rule, um, which is used for a slightly different setup when you have three sides um, and only a single angle as opposed to two of each. Um, and quite a natural question to ask about these two things after you learn them is, is there a tan rule? Like, we know sine, cos, and tan are, are kind of triplets, right? I mean, they're absolutely not. But it seems like a, a fairly sensible question to at least ask, is there a tan rule? Um, and the answer is yes, there is. Um, let's first look at um, the setup with this, the normal sine rule setup, where you've got two lengths and two angles. Um, now, this is the tan rule right here. So it looks a bit complicated. Um, but essentially, you've got one side where kind of the lengths are located, A minus B, the two lengths, A plus B, the two lengths. And then this other side where you've got tan, and then inside the tan, or, or, or both tans, I should say, you've got your angles. That's where your two angles are located. Um, and you can use this to solve this setup if you really want to. Um, for example, let's do it on this. Um, so here's the tan rule. You can pause the video and try and give this a go straight away if you want to. Um, but yeah, sure, let's label some stuff up first. So if we call this A, that makes this big A, and let's of course call this B, and that makes this big B, then we can just put everything in, right? So A, little a is 5, little b is x, so it's going to be 5 minus x over 5 plus x, and then big A is 30, little b is 45, and we end up with, with this thing here. Now, the nice thing about this is that this is all number. Um, so you can literally just, I think I've done yeah, one line of slightly pointless working here, but you can literally just type this entire thing into a calculator and you get this. And that's okay because now, of course, I can just bring this 5 plus x over to the other side, just multiply both sides by that, expand out these brackets. Um, I'm going to add this to both sides to give me 5.858. I'm going to add 1x to both sides to give me 0 0.828. And now just divide by 0 0.828 and you get x is 7.07. .07. And that's all fine until you realize just how much easier that would have been if you had just used sine rule. Because sine rule, of course, just says that x over sine 45 is 5 over sine 30. And you get the thing done in three lines of working, which is better. So maybe you can understand why teachers don't bother to teach tan rule um, when you have this sine, the classic sine rule setup, two angles, two sides. Like, it's pointless to teach this because you just end up doing much more work than if you just teach this. Um, the other reason that we don't teach tan rule for this setup of two angles, two sides, is because if we're looking for an angle in this picture, like if I change to this picture, notice how with sine rule, this is basically just as easy. You can actually just turn sine rule upside down and say sine x over 7 is sine 45 over 5 and get the question done just as quickly as if it was a length. Now, the problem with tan rule is that if you try and do this, so again, let's label the things, little a, big a, little b, big b, put those in. And um, the problem that you're immediately going to have here is that, okay, well, this is just a number. This is a minus 2 over 12, which makes minus 1 over 6. I guess we can cross multiply this out. Um, and now, please let me know how you intend to solve that using anything even resembling GCSE level maths because that's not possible to do. And so, I mean, it is possible to do, but again, using some other maths that's quite a long way above GCSE. So the, the, tan doesn't even work if you're given an angle in this setup, which is disappointing and another reason why no teacher in their right mind would ever bother to teach this for this setup. It's much harder if you're looking for a length and you just, you just can't do it if you're looking for an angle with GCSE maths. So what about the other setup then? What about the classic cosine rule setup? Um, so in cosine rule, the classic thing here to do would be to use it. You can use cosine rule here to find the missing length, right? You can label this C squared and you can, it's a bit like Pythagoras, but adjusted for the angle. Um, now, the problem with tan rule here is that, of course, tan only talks about two lengths, A and B. Like, it doesn't discuss a third length, C, at all. So we cannot use tan rule to find this length because it, it, it only talks about two lengths, A and B. So th that's a non-starter, right? We can't, find, we can't use tan to find this length, which is disappointing. But what about if we were trying to find a different angle? So what about this angle here? Now notice that we can't use sine rule. We've got sort of gone back to the sine rule setup of two angles um, and two sides. 
but we haven't really because they're not opposite. They're not. We haven't got opposite pairs going on. We've got this opposite pair, but the others aren't opposite, right? The sixty is opposite of blank, and the five is opposite of blank. So we can't use sine here. Um, we obviously can't use cosine because cosine only talks about one angle. And so if you were going to use GCSE maths on this, or regular GCSE maths, what you'd have to do is use cosine rule to find this missing length, as I've discussed that you could do. And then once you've had that length, just pretend it was seven. It's not, but let's just pretend this length was seven. You could then use sine, right? You could say seven over sine 60 is six over sine A. So to do this with normal GCSE maths, this question here, you would have to do cosine rule and then sine rule. And this is arguably the one tiny niche that tan rule kind of claims ownership of because tan rule can actually get this done in one go. Like you, you don't need to use a mix of a couple of different things. Tan rule can just do this. Now, a fair warning is it doesn't find it easy, but it can do it. Um, so let's just have a look at it, tan doing this in one go. So let's firstly label our things. Now, if this is big A naturally, this would be called little a. Um, and then we can call this. Now, this is a problem, right? Because as I said, we haven't got opposite pairs going on. So what I'm going to do is call this one little b, which makes this one big b. And already this feels weird because now I'm not even using the 60, apparently. Like I haven't labeled the 60 as anything that's going to go in here. So how is this possibly going to work? Um, and it's going to work because I'm going to very implicitly use this 60. Because what I'm going to say is, looking at this triangle, I don't know what A and B are, but I know that A plus B is 120. And notice how that's really helpful because A plus B can go in here. So I'm not directly going to use the 60 in this formula, but I'm going to sort of implicitly use it via this thing here, which I can then put in there. Okay, so let's, let's do this then. So little a is, uh, is 6, little b is 5, and then big A and B I don't know yet, but I know A plus B is 120. So all of that can go in there. Um, okay, and, and this side is just a number, so that's okay. 6 minus 5 is 1, 6 plus 5 is 11, so this is 1 over 11. This is obviously tan 60. I can get that tan 60 over, I can sort of half cross multiply, I'll, I'll cross multiply this over here, and then just leave the 11 over here to give me this. And of course, now this is just a number, which is great. Um, I can just type that into a calculator. And now I've got tan of something is this, so of course I can do tan minus 1 to find what this should be, the stuff in the bracket which is this, and now I can just multiply by 2 and I get this. Um, and still, this feels like I haven't achieved what I wanted because like, I want to find out A, but all I've got is A minus B. But this is fine because, remember, I also have A plus B. And now I have this equation, which I know because I just looked at the triangle, uh, and I know angles in triangle out of 180, and I have this equation, and now I have a simultaneous equation. Right? Like I can put these things together. If I add them to each other, the Bs will cancel. That adds with that nice and easily. I get 2a as that, divide by 2, and I find my a. Um, so this is the very small niche that tan rule possesses, which is that if you have this very particular setup where you've got a triangle that neither cosine or sine work on, and you'd have to use a combination of both, you can use tan rule, um, albeit in quite a difficult way, um, followed by a simultaneous equation, and you can find the angle that you're looking for. Um, so if you desperately want to give that a go, you're welcome to. I would not particularly recommend that you actually do this, really, ever, because uh, honestly, it still takes longer. Even in the very niche uh, question that it can do, it still takes longer than just doing cosine rule and then sine rule, if you're practiced at those things, which you should be anyway. So uh, yeah, I, I can't really... This is why teachers don't teach it, because even I as someone who does a lot of maths and really enjoys learning new maths, even I cannot justifiably ever, uh, you know, use this because it's just not efficient in any way ever.